When we first arrived at the prison, we were mind blown at how massive this place really was. Look at this thing, dude. It's got the concrete yard out there. The prison itself was gigantic, but the entire compound itself was just tucked in the back of the mountains in the middle of the woods, pretty much secluded in the middle of nowhere. Something interesting that we found out from the tour guide while we were there was that the prison itself was actually built in the shape of an upside down cross if you looked down at it from above. It was built in the shape of a cross just to send the message that they were unworthy. The upside down cross was actually a blueprint structure that was done on purpose. They just wanted healthy, able bodies in here to do the work. Um, we're finding that they weren't even criminals in the beginning. Oh my mm. gosh. They were put in here for lying, cussing, wow. dancing, drinking. A 10 year old was put in here for stealing bread, um, and he's not the only child. So wow. if you hear children, we had children here. Upon learning more about the history of this place, there was a lot of people that were wrongly accused or falsely imprisoned here. And we're talking about teenagers that might have cursed out in public or just been rude to the wrong person. This prison had a very dark undertone about it. It's pretty much the closest thing you can find to human trafficking in a prison system where they would imprison people who were pretty much innocent and then force them to work in the coal mines. They ruled this with an iron fist. If they wanted to beat you, shoot you, mm. whatever, that's what they done. Punishment for the prisoners that would act out was severe, to say the least. There were certain prisoners that were sent down to the hole for months at a time, way beyond the, the humane amount of time that people are allowed to spend down there, to the point that they would come out almost blind, unable to see. Prisoners that were tied to a whipping post and beaten nearly to death. There was also some prisoners that were in the courtyard and then left there for days at a time to rot in front of their fellow inmates. This was a very, very dark place when it was up and functioning. The scariest is the auditorium, because yeah. that is one of the places that we get true negativity. Spot. I know we get a creeper in that area, and that's where the negativity is. Join us for a chance to win in tonight's Halloween Trivia. In the 2023 movie Nefarious, who was the psychologist interviewing throughout the duration of the film? Was it A, a sad widowed mother, B, a doctor having nightmares, C, a man possessed by a demon in prison, or D, a priest who lost his way? Think you know the right answer? Leave it down below in the comments now for a chance to win a $100 gift card. <laughs> And she said, if we go upstairs over here, we can get to the auditorium, which uh, has some weird stuff. Are you in night vision? Are you in night vision? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you know what? That's what I'm saying. Let me get in front of you, though. So that way I can back to That's a bat. There's bats in here. I remember at one point while we were walking down a cell block, I could see through like this grated metal that on the floor on the opposite side was a small dead bird. That's always a bad sign. What? Dead bird. Oh man. You see it? Yeah. I guess it's not uncommon to encounter dead animals, maybe especially dead birds that have fallen out of a nest. But on previous paranormal investigations, typically if we see a dead animal, it's usually a bad omen. Imagine living in here, bro. That would suck, dude. This is the hallway that you have to walk? Yeah. And then you get to go to the kitchen and you don't see the sun for years? However long, yeah.
Look at this. Did we go this way? I don't think we did. I don't think so. Wanna check it real quick? Yeah. Ooh, cold air. Very cold air. This is the place where their family would come and visit them. Hey, bro. I give you 50 bucks, you stick your arm all the way down in there up to your, uh... Touch me. Does it feel cold over there? <laughs> yeah. Nothing, right? No, I'm sorry. You found an obelus in there. Oh, you had that the whole time. Is there anybody here? Can you come close to this device in my hand? If there's someone making footsteps down there, can you come closer? In one of the cell blocks, there was a cell that has a checkerboard and a bunch of cigarettes that are left there. And we were told that there's a particular entity that likes to linger in that area. I'd like to play a little bit of checkers. Well, what if I jump your piece and take it with me? I'd like to play a little bit of checkers. I'd like to play a little bit of checkers. I'd like to play a little bit of checkers. What do you think about that? I am like deep. In the catacombs of this floor, I have no idea how to get back to where I was. Yo! Really? Yeah, and I'll come in here and see what's... This just went crazy when I was in here. Did you see the cigarette here? You see the cigarettes here? And how dirty it is? You gonna... Oh. You gonna get mad if I take a cigarette? Hmm? We typically don't provoke at all when we're on these investigations, but if we've sat there for hours and we're not getting anything visually or auditorily, sometimes we attempt by any means necessary. What are you going to do if I break your cigarette? I wonder which one of these hey. you caught smoking. Were you saving this for later? You saving this for later? 
Pick it up, then. Come close to the device. I actually snapped a cigarette in half. I was like, if you're really here, if this is yours, do something. Show me that you're here. And um, at the time of doing that, nothing really happened. So I wasn't too worried about it. Just remember, I'm the one that broke your cigarette. So if you got a problem, you come find me. I'll be in the building. There was one floor in particular that actually made us a little bit uncomfortable because this is where they housed, let's just say, adults that liked my um, because certain words, obviously, you can't say on YouTube. This floor that we're on is where they used to house uh, the PED house. You know, I don't want to say it in the video demonetized. Yeah. Yes. We should put REM pods on each end. Smart. And sit in the middle. Good idea. And do like a yes, no in the middle, you know? So we heard that uh, the inmates that were here used to like minors. Is that true? Can you light up the yes, no prism? Just knowing that detail about that area made us extremely uncomfortable. You can come close to any of these devices. We have one down at the end of this hall. We have one all the way over there on that end on the floor. And then we have these right here. All you have to do is get close to one. Let us know that you're here. Why don't you come over here? Come close, come hang out. You were in a prison with some of the toughest criminals and rapists, and you survived that, so you shouldn't be afraid of just a couple little devices. It's not gonna hurt you. That was great. We could hear you, sounds like you're getting close, but obviously you're not close enough to light up the device down there at the end. Can you get next to that thing? It'll start blinking, it's like a toy. At one point we tried to play a game with the spirits in case he tapped the metal repeatedly and try to see if he could get someone to repeat the pattern. Let's play this game. I'm gonna tap a certain amount of times and if you could tap back the same amount of times, that would be amazing. Okay. You like playing games, yeah? Here we go. I'm gonna give you three to start and I just want you to do the same thing wherever you're at, ready? All right, here, let me give you a simple one. You ready? Repeat after me. The first few times that I tried to knock, we heard like little ticks and sounds in the background, but it wasn't anything that was definitive, like a clear pattern repeating me.
Legit three knocks in the same order that sounded like it was coming from down the hall right near us. Did you hear that voice too? Yeah. I heard three knocks and a groan. And it went bing, bing, bing. And it was like, mmm. look, it's down there. Can you get close to that device down there and give us another little knock? Let's try two this time. Can you do that? Oh. It made a blip twice, right? Let's try two this time. Can you do that? Oh. It made a blip twice, right? We tested the gymnasium for over 30 minutes with the EMF detector and an obelisk and we were not getting any responses. Nothing was coming through. We weren't getting many responses, but once we left the gymnasium, that's when things got a little bit crazy. Yeah, you heard that? I heard a voice. From in here. Camera. Camera. Okay, we gotta go in. While Casey and I were talking, we both stopped immediately because we heard a distinct voice of a man praying. Present. was somebody in there saying a prayer. Bro, if the people, if the people that gave us a tour This is the not, hole. What? This is the hole. Right. Yeah, this is, this is the hole. Dude, if the people who gave us a tour are not in here, I don't know how to explain that one. It's locked. How's, how do we get in here? It's all locked. That means she's not in there. Nobody's in there. Bro. Real shit. Go grab her and tell her we need to get in there. Okay. That's tricky, dog. We gotta explore that right now. Bro, you heard that? His audible? Yeah, audio? I heard that. Like, like it was. Dude. Here, stay close to here. You have a flashlight? You have a flashlight? I immediately ran to the front office where the two people sat that originally gave us our initial tour. Gateway. Gateway. React. No way.
Hey. Is there any way we can get in the hole? Yeah. We were just outside the door. We literally heard someone praying audibly on both cameras. They were both right where we left them. There was nobody present other than us over in that area. Now you can go underneath. If you'll jerk really hard on that door, you'll go down those steps instead of going up that ramp. Okay. Go down those steps and that door will take you to the hole. Be right on your way. We literally just heard like audible man voice four or five sentences on every camera we have. Insane. The look on both of their faces when I told them that what we just experienced was shocked, but also kind of like, yeah, we're not surprised. When I was out there by myself, that was one of the most terrifying moments in any prison that I visited for me. Huh? Yeah. Oh my God. I'm hearing this voice coming from down inside the hole and it's getting louder. It's getting angrier. I know that a lot of people that watch this video are gonna say, well, why didn't you rush down there to see what it was? Because the voice itself sounded aggressive and it's saying things like my prison, it's screaming curse words. It was absolutely horrifying. There was no amount of money that you could have paid me to go down there by myself. By the time I got back to Casey, he was standing on top of the staircase that led down to the hole and the voice we'd heard had completely stopped. It completely stopped. It just stopped, completely stopped. It went dead silent. When he played me back the sounds he heard coming from down below the hole, it sounded demonic as f Oh my God. When I played it back for Colton, listening back to the footage, him and I could both hear clearly, like it sounded like something demonic. I don't know what that was that I encountered when I was out there, but it felt horrifying. It sounded aggressive, and I don't think it had good intentions by any means. Bro, down here, be careful, bro. Listen to me. We searched the entire downstairs, even the cells in the hole, and the upstairs section was closed off. I've been doing this long enough that I've formed a healthy fear of the paranormal. I've been choked, scratched, pushed by paranormal entities, and I'm fully aware that if an entity has enough energy and it's malevolent, it will try to harm you if you're provoking it too much. I have to know what that is. We need to find out how to get up there. I'm literally gonna go in there now. I just walked with the camera on record myself sitting in that room. Her and him were there? On the opposite side of the property. Really? Yeah. We canvassed the whole building and we couldn't hear another peep. Look, this shit is all fucking 
taped off, but I'm thinking, fucking go around the back and look, bro. I got to know what that is, bro. And now it's just done? Like, is that really a thing? Next, we went outside to the whipping post. This has a very dark history on it, and we actually put the yes-no prism on top of it. Can you light up either side of the prism? Let us know that you're here with us right now. We heard there's a lot of activity out here. Were you someone who was a victim of the whipping post? Were you here for yes. testing? No way. Someone that was a victim of the whipping post. Oh, wow. Yes. We got an immediate response, which we thought was an indication that whatever we were communicating with had strong feelings towards the questions we were asking. Holy fuck. That was pretty clear and pretty quick. Have you been one of the ones that have been making noises throughout the prison while we've been in here? We heard a lot of tapping noises. Someone tapped back at us. We heard a voice earlier. Was that you? Or are you someone different? Were you one of the kids that got sent here? Wow. Yes. Just to make sure that our device is working properly and make sure that we can communicate with you clearly, can you light up the other side just to let us know that you have the ability if you could do that, that would be incredible. It'll light up red. Is that two yeses? I've never seen that before. No yeah, one side's supposed to light up red. Did you see that? We approached a building where we knew that the hole was underneath it, which is solitary confinement. For those of you who don't know what the hole is, um, this is the place where prisoners would go when they were on bad behavior. They would be locked in, dead silence, darkness. Dude. It's fucking pitch black in here, bro. It is pitch ass black in here. Without night vision? Mm-hmm. Dude, that's every day, all day. Let's do a thing. Let's experience what this is like. Yeah. You know? So Cold and I are in solitary confinement now. We're in a place called The Hole, which is pitch black 24 hours a day. And I'm going to cut the flashlight right now so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. It's like the same conditions every place I've ever been. <sighs> get used to the hole. I think the scariest thing about being here is potentially the reason why you got here in the first place. Like they were talking about, like cussing, being rude in public, saying the wrong word in front of somebody. Yeah. And then being thrown in a dark cell hole where no one cares, no one, everyone forgot you're here. I packed up all the devices. I had the night vision camera in my hand. We were kind of walking around in the dark, trying to see if we could catch anything cool on camera, like maybe a shadow figure. Pitch black in here, bro. What's that follow your screen? Yeah, I don't even remember which way we're supposed to go to get out. What is this? Oh, what just went in there? The camera's blurry, but I think that I just caught a, a cabinet moving. Yeah, it's still moving. It's still moving, bro. Look. Do you see that? Do you see that? I was looking through Casey's viewfinder, and I could see movement inside of this dark room. I didn't know exactly what I just saw. Dude, I was looking right at your screen as it happened. I know. <gasps> Dude. Oh, fuck, bro. No way. And I could have sworn I saw a shadow move, but then I realized 
It was actually a cabinet moving on its own. Got it clear as day, and it was freaky as hell. What the f***? What is this? That sh literally just moved again. Whatever's here with us, can you move the cabinet again if you're here? Later playing back the footage, we saw two cabinet doors open almost simultaneously with each other and no one was present. We're talking about a room that has no windows and one door, the door that we were looking through. Dude, this shit is pitch black in here, bro. What's that phone on your screen? Yeah, I don't even remember which way we're supposed to go to get out. What is this? Oh, dude. Oh, what just moved in there? What is this? Oh, Hang on. Let me. Like. Like, I think both of these moved, bro. I think this one here opened. And then that one, like, started to close. All I saw was literally like the shade of brown yeah. shift, and then you jumped and you I know jumped. You know what makes me really fucking uncomfortable? Oh. The fact that we just played that fucking demonic prayer. Yeah, dude. This place was definitely haunted, but I don't think it was just haunted by regular spirits. This place is haunted by some very dark energies, spirits that were prisoners in their past lives, Spirits that have done very evil things in the past. The place is plagued with terrible history. If you hear the details of everything that went on in this place, it's no wonder that this is so incredibly active with negative energy. The whole prison is a giant monolith in the shape of an upside down cross. The whole land is plagued by poisonous rattlesnakes. Over 10,000 deaths have been documented here. Like, it's... It's a place that is primed for demonic, negative, spiritual activity. I think that when we were there, I actually managed to anger one of them. That's what happens. You shouldn't go to haunted places like this and try to provoke. But I will say that provoking did bring out some sort of activity that we may not have gotten if I didn't provoke. My big takeaway as far as like my own emotional response to things that we were experiencing there was definitely the voices we heard above the whole. I cannot express to you how awestruck, fear struck we were in that moment. We're both looking at each other like, this is probably the most intense class A auditory EVP, if you wanna call it that, that we've ever experienced. We captured it on all of our audio devices, both cameras clear as day. Oh my God.